Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and we're going to start this off with a Brad Garlinghouse retweet of the Ripple Markets Report. He says, as shared in Q2, our XRP Markets Report now look a bit different than before. On the plus side, our markets team gives new insight into XRP Ledger activity. Um, they uh, says they, they track including daily spot and DEX trading volume three times growth Q over Q. Not bad. We're in luck. Ripple has been, the private equity has been added to the link to platform. They keep running out. Um, go check it out. I have not checked on the pricing or anything like that. Link to is one of my sponsors and you need to go check link to out. They're going public. They announced they're going public in 2024. Then we've got Stuart Alderati, another day and another court finds the SEC again acted arbitrarily and capriciously. Is anyone else concerned about this very troubling pattern of the SEC flouting any faithful allegiance to the law under Mr. Gensler? And this is a reference to this tweet by Paul Graywall, general counsel of Coinbase. Before it was the DC circuit in grayscale, now it's the fifth circuit in a challenge to its stock buyback disclosure rule again and again, federal, co co federal courts of appeal hold that the SEC acted arbitrarily and capriciously in violation of the Administrative Procedure Act. The third branch remains our last best hope. All right, then Elon Musk went on for two minutes on Joe Rogan and talked about George Soros. I mean, Soros actually, you know, it, he, he is, I believe, the top contributor to the Democratic Party. Um, the second one was uh, Sam, Sam Bankman Bank Free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and Soros, I don't know. I mean, he had a very difficult upbringing. Um, and uh, I, in my opinion, he fundamentally hates humanity. That's my opinion. Really? Yeah. Those are the I kind mean, of issues that could come from childhood. Well, he's doing things that erode the fabric of civilization, you know, uh, getting DAs elected who refuse to prosecute crime. That's part of the problem in San Francisco and L.A. and a bunch of other cities. So why would you do that? Was it humanity or is it just the United States as a whole? I mean, is I mean he's doing pushing things to other countries, too. He's not doing just the here. same thing? Yeah. Now, George at this point is pretty old. I mean, he's not... Uh, you know, he's basically a bit senile at this point. But I mean, he, he, he and, and he's, he, he's, a, he's very smart. Um, and he's very good at arbitrage. You know, famously, he. Uh, oh, that, you know, that's the kind of thing you do by locating things offshore and doing things like that, isn't it? Toward the British pound. That's sort of how uh, I think he made his first uh, money was shorting the pound. Um, so he's, he's good at spotting. Uh, basically arbitrage, like spotting value for money that other people don't see. So uh, one of the things he noticed was that in it, it, that that the value for money in local races is much higher than it is in national races. So the lowest value for money is a presidential race. Then next lowest value for money is a Senate race, then a Congress, and then. But once you get to sort of city and state district attorneys. Um, the value of money is extremely good. And uh, Soros realized that you don't actually need to change the laws, you just need to change how they're enforced. If nobody chooses to enforce the law or the laws are differentially enforced, it's like changing the laws. That's Exactly. Now, just a little reminder. This is from Zero Hedge back in December of 2022. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler scrubbed the evidence of his meetings with George Soros and that woman who is married to, or I think is married to a guy who used to be president and Nancy Looney Tune, whack job, Nancy Pelosi. Okay. This is who you have as SEC chairman. 
Yeah, nothing but a political hatchet man as SEC chairman. And that is who runs the SEC. And that's why our country is upside down. And now he's charging Safe Moon, which look, folks, I remember when that I remember when this thing, here's the way this stuff works. Anytime it's something that's shady as it can be, it's not there, and then all of a sudden it is there. And I can give you examples. FTX is an example I've used before. I had never, I've been in this since 2013. I had never heard of FTX. And then all of a sudden I see Tom Brady on TV and now I've heard of FTX. I had never heard of it until then. Until Tom Brady does a commercial on it. Okay? I've seen time after time Luna popped up like that. Safe Moon popped up like that. And all of a sudden everybody's asking, are you buying Safe Moon? Are you buying Safe? And that's why I stay a mile away from these kind of things because they're obvi it's obvious what's going on. Now, why it takes the SEC this long after all the people have already been hurt to take down somewhat something that looks obviously like a pump and dump, your guess is as good as mine. They spent three years going after Ripple, who had been completely transparent while Safe Moon did its thing. XRP revisited a 60, 60 cent mark. It's actually, it's gotten as high as 61, I think. Market value for the first time since its tumble back in August 16th. Along this road back, we've seen whales get gradually more involved. Additionally, there are now, uh, now all-time high 277,000 wallets holding at least 10,000 XRP. How about them apples? And then we've got this new, um, you know, remember Mike Novogratz has bet dimes to donuts that he that we're going to get a Bitcoin ETF and he just happens to be creating one that has now received its ticker symbol on uh, listed on the DTCC. And I want to finish here by showing you this clip. This guy is sharp. I love him. He is Greg Marinero, Manorino, I think is how you say his name, Manorino. Listen to what Gre Gregory Manorino says here. He is directly over the target. And in case you're brand new here, it is to inflate and then inflate some more and create reasons to borrow more cash into existence. I don't know what else to say about this. It's out of control. Anyway, looking over at this market and the fear trade, knee jerk into the dollar. When you see a move like that, it's fear trade. You got the 10 year yield selling off. The bond market is selling off people. Again, this is not, this is another thing that's getting almost no attention on in the mainstream media. We are in some kind of uh, a, a twisted environment. This is the largest sell off, the most vicious sell off in bonds that we have ever seen in history. This has never happened before what we're seeing right now. It's getting almost no attention here. Um, and all this boils down to is we are in a full-blown, full-on liquidity crisis. It's drying up. I can't tell you what a threat this is to the people of the world. Um, honestly, we are marching very rapidly towards a locking up of the system, a credit freeze. A credit freeze. Again, I've Ooh. warned about this repeatedly over the years. It's happening. We got this liquidity crisis getting worse. If this gets any worse from where we are now, and I expect it will be, this whole system is going to lock up. You will not be able to gather goods that you need to survive. Your debit card will not work. Your credit card will not work. Transactions will stop. You understand? That was the real problem. Of you know, that kind of reminds me of um, when Chris Larson was on stage at Money 2020, and he said, we think that um, XRP could help in a systemic situation. <laughs> Remember that? It drives me crazy too. And, and uh, people have, uh, don't know what was going on during the financial crisis. The real reason why, or the main reason, the only reason why Ben Bernanke was rushed into Congress to tell them that they had to pump billions of dollars into the system to free up the credit markets because it was locking up. We were right at that moment where the system was starting to lock up those billions of dollars that were pumped into the market was to free up credit that's what it was and of course the banks needed to bail out was the banks again let's talk about that real quick okay the next bailout or bail-in that these banks is going to need is going to eclipse 
what happened last time by exponents. The financial system today has never, ever been worse off. I want you to think about that, okay? We understand the problems and I've covered this to the point of nauseam with regard to these financial institutions. We haven't even begun to talk about the real estate issues, the commercial real estate issues that these institutions are going to face. That means you and I are in trouble like you can't believe because we are the ones who they suck the funding out of for bailouts of banks and institutions. Let me explain this to you in another way here. Okay, last time they bailed out the banks on our backs. This time they're gonna bail out nations on our backs. And it's the central banks who are responsible for every freaking thing that we're seeing here right now, people. It's yes, sir. But you know what they're not gonna do? They're not gonna get my physical gold. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is my sponsor. Give them code DAI gold, info at milesfranklin.com, 952-929-7006. Give them a call for the best pricing on physical gold, which they're not going to be able to take. Now, um, I'm going into the, the group now, and in the group, I'm going, I'm delving into the FTX organizational chart even further. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that I did, I mentioned it. Um, in the last video, but I did talk to Brad Combs and if he if he follows through and ends up doing XRP Las Vegas, he has given me his word that he's going to give me a discount code for people in this member group. And um, other than that, I'm going to go to some of my sponsors and see if I can work on getting some discounts um, for the group on other things as well. So that's exciting. Um, it's DAIXRP.com if you want to join the group. We'll see you in the group. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that all roads lead to the island guy and to China, or the, world, the country that starts with a C. And you can hear more about all of that at DAIXRP.com. Enter at your own risk. It is the danger zone. Thanks for listening.